Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. My name is Paula. Today's video is a Sunday reset. I'm going to share with you the way I get myself and my house in order and get set up for the week ahead. This is a little bit different style of video and I hope you enjoy it. Let's get started. Here's a look at the current state of affairs in my kitchen. It's definitely not the messiest it's ever been, but it really needs to be tidied up and straightened up before I feel good about going back to work on Monday. It really helps my mental health if I feel like my house is in order when I head out the door on Monday morning to go back to work after the weekend. I work full time as a school counselor, so I really like to have everything kind of tidied up and good to go on Monday morning when I walk out the door. So I usually take Sunday to get the house in order, get the laundry done, get some groceries in, plan my meals for the week, and get myself ready to have a productive and stress-free, or as stress-free as possible, week ahead. The first thing I like to do is to just start out by tidying up everything. If there are things that don't belong in the kitchen, to take them out of the kitchen and put them back where they go, to get the dishes done and out of the sink, either washing them by hand or loading the dishwasher, unloading the dishwasher and reloading it. It really bothers me to have dirty dishes in the sink. That's something that I really can't stand is a dirty sink. So I really like to tackle the dishes and get those washed, dried, and put up as soon as possible. And then I can start tackling the rest of the chores. We've had a lot of new subscribers over the past few months, so I thought I would take this opportunity to reintroduce myself and the channel to any of you who may be relatively new to our channel. Relatively Refined is the collaborative effort of myself and my two sisters, Patty and Kathleen. I live in Somerville, South Carolina, outside of Charleston, and my two sisters live in Vermont. Patty lives in northern Vermont, and my sister Kathleen lives with her husband in our grandparents' old farmhouse in southern Vermont. We really have a great time with the channel. When what got us started was that when I would watch YouTube, there really didn't seem to be a whole lot out there for people my age. I'm over 50, as are both my sisters. We are either empty nesters or about to be empty nesters. And a lot of what I was finding on YouTube had to do with people just sort of starting out in life, big families, and that's just not where we are in this season of our lives. It was at one time where we were, but it isn't currently. So we really wanted to make some content that we would like to watch. And so hopefully um, you're enjoying what we are putting out there. We've started this channel just about two years ago, and it has grown um, very nicely. And we are very pleased with that. We are hoping to get to 10,000 subscribers by the summer. So we would love for you to subscribe if you haven't already and share this with your friends who you think uh, might enjoy this type of content. One of the most wonderful parts of starting our channel has been the opportunity to get to know some of our subscribers through your comments and your feedback. It's just really, we think of you all as friends and when we are sitting down and having a meal or making a meal or cooking something, we imagine that you're sitting there with us having a cup of coffee or a cup of tea or a glass of wine. And we hope that you feel the same way. We enjoy taking you through our lives and introducing you to our families and things that we enjoy and showing you around our homes and just kind of going about our daily business, but including you. So I hope you're happy to come along and you are enjoying the content that we do put out for you. All right, back to the Sunday reset. As you can see, I'm just really taking this opportunity to 
get the counters cleared off and wiped down. I put up the dishes, cleared out the sink, and then I will take my favorite microfiber cloths and my favorite Mrs. Myers all-purpose cleaner and wipe down all of my counters. I like to get everything kind of off of them so that I can then go through and give them a good wipe down. And the smell of the Mrs. Myers cleaner is so lovely. It's lavender, it's one of my favorite scents. And I we have an Amazon storefront linked in the description box of the video where we list all the cleaning products and all of our favorite things. And um, you can follow the links and if you're interested in, in finding out what we use or purchasing it for yourself, you can. It doesn't cost you any more to use our links. Um, they are affiliate links, so I think we may earn a very tiny commission on some of those links, although I'm not 100% sure about that. But at any rate, if you click on the link for our Amazon storefront, all of the products that we love and that we use will be listed there if you are interested. One thing I wanted to share with y'all is that um, my sisters and I, we come from a big family. Um, I'm the oldest of five siblings. My sister Kathleen is next. Then we have a brother, Billy, who lives in Alaska. And then Patty is fourth in line. And then our baby brother is Danny. And he also lives in um, East Dorset, Vermont, where my sister uh, Kathleen lives and where we grew up. We're a very close family. We had a wonderful childhood. My parents were both teachers. Um, my sisters, as I mentioned, well, I'm not sure if I mentioned that, but my sisters are both educators. Kathleen is a reading teacher. Patty was a second grade teacher and a school counselor, and I am a school counselor. And we just had a wonderfully idyllic childhood. Our mom, Judy, has made an appearance a couple of times on the channel, and she does watch every week, but I'm going to be heading down there over my spring break, so I'm hoping to do a little filming with um, Judy when I am there. All right, looks like I've gotten most of the things off the counter that don't belong on the counter and I'm just about ready to give them a good wipe down, as I mentioned. I find wiping down countertops so satisfying. I don't know if I'm alone in this, if it's just kind of a weird quirk, but it's to me, it's just very therapeutic to take everything off and wipe it all down and wipe down those things that go back on it and put it all back together. The other thing that I absolutely love is to have a clean stove. I read once that in the Chinese art or the Chinese philosophy of feng shui, that a clean stove brings prosperity into the home. And so ever since then, I've been very meticulous about making sure that my stove is clean because I certainly don't want to block any prosperity coming my way because my stove is dirty. And there you see me using that microfiber cloth. It's a cleaning and polishing cloth and they do a wonderful job. I absolutely love them. And those are linked in our Amazon store.
Something else that I wanted to mention if you are new is that in addition to our YouTube channel, we do have a website, relativelyrefined.com, and that is also linked down below. And on that website, we have a blog where we post um, usually about once a week, maybe a little bit less. But we try to align our blog posts a lot of times with our videos, so we'll include recipes or uh, descriptions of projects that we're working on or just other general musings. So we do post in our blog and we also have an online store. And in our store we carry items seasonally that we absolutely love and use in our homes. So we do have some of our new spring items coming out. I gave an update in my last video about some of the things that were online. And I do want to mention that um, the oyster trinket dishes that had been out of stock arrived this weekend and they are now restocked on our shop website. So if you were one of the folks who wanted one of those oyster trinket dishes and they sold out before you could get one, they have been restocked. So I did want to let you know. And again, the link for that is in the description box of this video. Right now I am polishing and or cleaning and polishing my stainless steel fridge. My favorite product to use to clean and polish stainless steel are the Wyman's either stainless steel wipes or the Wyman's stainless steel spray. That is a fabulous product. Unfortunately, I was out of it, so I had to use my all-purpose spray and then go in with a clean and dry microfiber cloth and just buff and polish it. But Nothing cleans and polishes like the Wyman's stainless steel polish. I have that product linked in the Amazon shop, and I'm telling you, we are not sponsored by them, but my sister Patty and I both love that product. I think it's the best product for cleaning stainless steel that I have ever used. Now I'm moving over to my coffee area and wiping everything down and uh, using again the, the Mrs. Myers. I use the concentrate and I pour it in, you know, just a cap full of it into a spray bottle and add water. And that's what I use. It saves on plastic and I can control the concentration of it. So it lasts a whole long time. I can't remember how much a bottle of concentrate costs. Maybe, maybe $15, maybe not even that much. And it lasts, I mean, months, seven, eight months for me. Um, so it's really a great product and it leaves your whole house smelling so wonderful. We are on the hunt for a new coffee maker. Um, I'm thinking that we want to get one that grinds the coffee beans and then brews the coffee. So if you have any suggestions for coffee makers that you love, please leave them in the comments because we're really kind of doing our research right now about what we might want. I think we looked at both Cuisinart and Breville as two brands that make a coffee maker that does the grinding and then the brewing that you can set on the timer. I think my parents when I was growing up had the Cuisinart that um, ground the coffee and then brewed it because I can remember hearing that it was almost like an alarm clock My dad would set it to grind it first thing in the morning and I knew that when that went off it was time to get up All right, I gave my floors a, a, a good vacuum with my Dyson cordless vacuum cleaner Which I do absolutely love and now I'm showing you this rug this rug. I love it is from Chandler four corners which is a um, a company that is based in my hometown in Vermont. They are hand hooked wool rugs and we do carry some Chandler Four Corners items on our online shop. We had some pillows at Christmas time and now we have some really adorable bee coasters. But I love this rug. It's called Four Seasons. So it's spring, summer, winter, and fall as illustrated by these trees and it's beautiful. But it's right under my sink and so you know it gets you know, things dropped on it, we walk on it, and it did need a good cleaning. So I am just pre-treating some of the spots with my Dawn Power Wash, also a fabulous product if you're looking for something that really does a great job cleaning 
that is it. And then I'm going to go over it with my little green machine and um, just, you know, give it a little uh, a shampooing and do some spot cleaning of some of the spots that are on there. It may not have been the best choice to get a light colored rug for right in front of the sink, but I love this rug. So I just go over it whenever it needs it with the green machine and that seems to keep it in, in good shape. This is also one of those satisfying tasks and it's especially satisfying when you see the water that you get in the little canister after you've cleaned something and you see how dirty it is. I mean, it's, don't get me wrong, it's also kind of gross, but it's fascinating at the same time. <laughs> it's just hard to imagine that it was that dirty, but it does make a huge difference when you do shampoo it. And I think in a few minutes, I'll show you the water, which is embarrassing, but also satisfying, as I said. And overall, we're clean people, so I'm always shocked at how dirty the water is. But I guess just daily wear and tear and, you know, dogs and people and what have you. It's amazing how much dirt you can get up. And I do love this little green machine too. This is wonderful for spot cleaning. Like if you have upholstery you want to spot clean, it's a, it's a great little uh, machine and I love using it. Okay, here is a look at the water. Again, like I said, it's kind of embarrassing, but also oddly satisfying to see that, that how much dirt came out of that rug. So I'm just gonna pour it down the drain, clean up the green machine, and then give my sink a good scrubbing. The product that I'm using on my sink is a Mrs. Myers product as well. It's a sink scrub. It's made with baking soda and some other things, and the scent is, um, lemon verbena that's also i love this product as well i'm a big fan of the mrs myers products i'm also a big fan of a clean sink i love a clean sink to me it's the same thing as the stove if your stove and your sink and your fridge are dirty i just feel like oh nothing is clean So it's important to me that I have a clean sink, a clean fridge, and a clean stove. This is another place that gets um, dirty and you wouldn't think it, but the, you know, the pantry door, we're always kind of going in and out of that. So I like to give that a good wipe down as well and keep that in good shape. I don't always wipe down all of my cupboards, but the ones that we use most often, I do give a little spritz to. Um, I try to do it once a week if I, if I remember to. Again, this was probably far more important when there were six of us living in the house. There are only three of us now. Um, it's just my daughter Neve, myself, and Truy currently at home. But the kids will be coming home from college for the summer and so you know when you introduce three more people into the house you get a lot more dirt and <laughs> grime <laughs> so i don't have little grubby baby hands in my house right now but um we do sometimes have some grubby adult hands so it, <laughs> it does require a wiping down every once in a while and here is a look at the clean kitchen it's so satisfying to me. I love a clean kitchen. It makes me feel calm, makes me feel happy. I just love it. I feel ready for the week ahead.
One of the other things I like to do on Sundays is to make sure that I have food for the week in my fridge. So let's do a little grocery haul. Here's our grocery haul. So we got a bunch of chicken for some recipes. <clears throat> We're gonna do some Greek chicken kebabs as well as Greek chicken bowls. We got some sliced deli meat for sandwiches. We love these Grillo's pickles. And then also these Wahlburgers dill spears for big pickle family. And then as you all know, Truy, um, or you may not know actually, she's a travel nurse. So she takes these breakfast burritos for a quick uh, breakfast in the morning when she's traveling. And then these are also for her when she's traveling. This Rana's meat lasagna and the grilled white chicken fettuccine Alfredo. Of course, she'll doctor that up. So we have some Parmesan cheese, a loaf of bread, and we are in the South. So we have Texas Pete and Frank's. And then we have this New England blueberry cobbler coffee, which is delicious. Publix had um, extra virgin olive oil on BOGO. So we got a couple of those, some garlic. These Laughing Cow cheese wedges are delicious and they were also on buy one, get one. So we got a couple of those. Some more pasta for quick and easy meals. Then we have the Faya 2% uh, Greek yogurt. That is, will be for the tzatziki sauce for the Greek chicken bowls, as well as I like to eat that with berries and honey. Some eggs. I love these Quaker um, chocolate rice cakes. Here's another really delicious uh, product, these Gerard salad dressings. We have the champagne vinaigrette and the Caesar. They're excellent. Some Celsius for Truy and Neve. Honey bunches of oats. They also had these on special, the Cape Cod um, kettle chips. My favorite flavors are the salt and vinegar and the barbecue. Then the um, sweet cream creamer, some almond milk. And then over here we have some of our produce. These peppers will be for the, um, the uh, Greek chicken, the shish kebab. So we'll have peppers and onions and um, chicken on a, on a kebab and we'll grill it. We'll marinate those tonight and some Greek seasonings and some other things. Cucumber for the tzatziki chicken bowls. Then of course, some berries, strawberries, blackberries and blueberries. Some dog food for Phoebe and Hazel. They get a combination of dry and wet food and some garbage bags. So that is our weekly grocery haul. Actually, this should last us a couple of weeks, but that's what we got for today. All right, I'm gonna be sharing with you a delicious Greek chicken recipe. And here's an overview of what's in it. There's a whole bunch of spices and herbs that go into the marinade. That's the first thing that you do is you chop up some peppers and onions and chicken and then you let it marinate. You can marinate it overnight. You can marinate it for a couple of hours. I'm sure you can hear Phoebe snoring in the background. So I'm going to get started by chopping up my peppers and onions. I just use green and red peppers and I cut them into chunks. Now you can uh, marinate them and then cook them on the grill on skewers or you can cook them in the oven in a um, in a pan it just depends the plan for us was to cook them on the grill on skewers so I'm going to cut them in chunks that are big enough so that they can fit on the skewer and not fall down between the grill grates so here you see me just chopping up the peppers and onions And you can use any variety of peppers. You can use yellow, orange, and red peppers. You can use only green peppers or only red peppers. What, whatever your favorite type of peppers are, go ahead and use those. I just happened to get um, a couple of bags at the store and they had some green and some red. So that's what I'm using.
And for the onions, what I like to use are the big Vidalia sweet onions. You can use regular yellow onions as well. And I, again, I just cut those in half and then quarter the halves and kind of separate the onion pieces. But you wanna leave them in, in fairly big chunks so that they hold up when they're on the grill. Next, I'm gonna take these little sugar bomb cherry tomatoes that we happen to have in our fridge and take them off the vine and I'll just poke them with the tip of my knife just to pierce them. And those will go into the marinade as well. You can also use regular whole tomatoes and you know quarter them or cut them into large pieces and add those to the marinade. And again, we'll put those on the skewers. So with tomatoes, they need to be in pretty good sized chunks if they're whole tomatoes in order for them to hold up on the grill or these um, cherry tomatoes. All right, Truy is going to make the marinade. She is the cook extraordinaire in our household. So she's gonna start out with some olive oil and lemon juice. She doesn't measure anything. She seasons by her heart, she said. Um, her mother is, was Latin and so she said she's not afraid of spices and herbs and we shouldn't be either when we cook, but I'm a little more timid with my seasoning than she is. This is Lowry's seasoning salt, so she's going to put a generous amount in there. And what you have to remember is that this is a marinade, so we're not directly seasoning the uh, meat and the vegetables, they're gonna soak in the marinade. So you can go a little more heavy handed on the salt in this case. Now she's going in with some black pepper. And I believe this is onion powder. Yes, so she will add some onion powder, a pretty generous amount of the onion powder as well. And give that a good stir to kind of mix everything around. There's a lot that goes into this marinade and again some of it just happened to be stuff that we had in the refrigerator that we needed to use up and some of it is seasoning that she uses you know on a regular basis. This is granulated garlic. Again fairly generous with the garlic. And then this seasoning that she's adding is Cavender's Greek seasoning. This is the magic ingredient. This is wonderful. But this also does contain salt. So again, you just have to be aware of how much you're using. She's gonna be generous with this because it's a marinade and she's not directly salting the food. Um, it's kind of indirect because it's in the marinade, but it does have other ingredients. So you wanna give um, a generous amount of that. Uh, put a generous amount of that into the marinade. The next thing she's going to add, I believe, is this Brianna's salad dressing. This was just um, a, a little bit that we had left in the fridge, so she's going to add the rest of that. It's the Brianna's Real French Vinaigrette, and I used that in a pasta salad recipe that I made in a previous video, which I will try to remember to link above or in the description box below. So she's just gonna finish that off and pour that into the marinade. And then a little more lemon juice. Again, she does not measure anything, so it's really hard for me to write down the recipe. You just kind of have to watch her. <laughs> That's how I learned to be a little bolder with my seasoning. That, I think, is rice wine vinegar. It's a combination of ingredients that you would never, or that I would never think to put together, but I can assure you they are delicious when you get it all mixed up. This is some um, fresh garlic, or not necessarily fresh, you could use fresh garlic, but that's the garlic that's pre-minced. And then this is a lemon champagne vinegar. Like I said, it's pretty much everything but the kitchen sink going into this. So now that she's made the marinade, I'm just going to cut up my chicken breasts. And what I like to do is just cut them into, you know, 
cubes bigger than bite-sized but um you know not huge chunks of chicken but enough that we could put them on the skewer and they won't fall apart on the grill so now everything is in a big plastic tub the meat and the vegetables and true is just going to pour the marinade over the whole thing and then let it sit in the fridge in our case overnight i believe is what we did but you know you can do it for an hour or a couple of hours or overnight give it a good shake and then flip it over to make sure all the, in, the vegetables and the meat are coated with the marinade and then put it in the fridge now we were going to grill but it started to rain so we ended up putting it in a pan and cooking it in the oven we also added some greek um, some Kalamata olives and some pepperoncinis or banana peppers. You could also add some feta cheese. What Truy did was put this all in a pan, put it under the broiler for 10 minutes, and then put it to 350 and bake it for about 50 minutes. And it was so delicious. The vegetables release their water and it makes kind of like a little bit of a juiciness in there that you can soak up with some good crusty bread it was fantastic and really not hard to do at all I hope you'll give it a try all right that is going to do it for today's video I hope you enjoyed this Sunday reset video if you did please go ahead and give it a thumbs up leave us some comments down below if you've got recommendations for a coffee maker, if you've got recommendations for cleaning products that you love that you think our other viewers would enjoy hearing about, please leave those down below. We're hoping to make Sunday Reset a regular feature on our channel as kind of a bonus Sunday video in addition to our regular Thursday offerings. Um, but anyway, I really enjoyed spending today with you. I thank you so much for taking time out of your day to uh, watch our channel. We truly appreciate it. We appreciate each and every one of you. If you haven't subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and I will see you in the next video. All right. Bye-bye.